This is Tom Asprey with the Viper Report. Today we're going to be talking about weekly doji signals. First of all, the basics. What is a doji? This is what a doji typically looks like. It's a price bar that's formed when the opening and closing price are about the same or exactly the same. Now people get into the weeds a little bit talking about the different types of dojis. You know, typical doji, dragonfly doji, which is a bullish thing because obviously prices were quite low or close strong. The opposite of that is a gravestone doji, which prices were higher and then closed on the lows. Long-legged doji, I don't, uh, you know, a doji essentially is a sign of indecision. So particularly when it's a, a fairly tight range, it's kind of a battle between the, the buyers and the sellers. Oftentimes you see a doji form at the end of a decline or at the end of a sharp rally, and that's where the doji signals come into play. Let's look at a few of these and see how they work. So this is Apple in 2012. The important thing to remember is that you look for a doji signal, a doji buy signal after a pronounced decline. I usually like to see a decline of 15 to 20 percent or more, and a doji sell signal after a rally of 15 to 20 percent more. Uh, that doesn't mean the other Dojis should be ignored. It's just the, the, the best signals occur then. For example, here Apple in uh, December of 2011 formed a doji, pulled back, and then this is a weekly chart, um, closed above the doji low. So that's a sign that the you know there was indecision here, then the buyers took over. What else do we have in this chart? Well, you have these light green lines. They're the Stark bands, Stark plus, Stark minus. When prices are near the upper band, it's a higher risk time to buy. Stark minus band, a higher risk time to sell and a low risk time to buy. So particularly, I find that when you see dojis that are near one of the Stark bands, they even become more significant. Uh, below the bar chart, we have volume. And below that, we have the on balance volume in red. And this green line is a 21 period weighted moving average. So let's take a look at what happened in Apple. Uh, we had this little positive formation, a nice rally started. The low for this move was 1121. It had a high of 1316, so that was a decline of 14.8%, kind of marginal. Um, so by the time we move up here, you can see this bar up here in, in February of 2012, you know, we opened at 1541, we closed at 1549. So, you know, within the margin of a, a doji formation. And by that point, we were $15 versus 11. So the stock had been up about 40%. So you'd be looking for doji sell signals. Here we had a clear cut doji where the arrow is, uh, opened at 1683, closed at 1682. You know, continued to move higher from there above the Stark bands for a number of these weeks. You know, formed a doji here formed a doji here. This doji, the high was 1917, the low was 1836, and the close was 1850. So that, you want to, in order to generate a doji sell signal, in this case a weekly doji sell signal, you would need to see a close below 1836. Next week, the market was up sharply. Um, second week after that, we closed at 1867 so that didn't make it but then this week here we closed at 1768 generating a doji sell signal now the market just declined for you know another month you know went from say uh, 1768 down to a low of 16 dollars so it was about a 10 percent drop to the downside you know and uh, you know that we follow the technical studies because the OBV was really strong when prices peaked and uh, it was well above its moving average. So that was sort of a sign the market was overbought, but it really didn't generate any negative signals. And the market started edging back up, you know, formed a doji here, another doji. But once again, you know, we were at 1864 and uh, it was about a 10% rally up to here wasn't significant above. Um, fast forward till September when we formed this doji up here, you know, then we're, we closed at 2167. So that's $5 above the low here at 16. So that's, uh, you know, that's more like 25% or more. So that's, 
you know, a doji sell signal as possible. Also, you know, once again, we were up near the upper stark bands and it was a really a clear doji. So then we had the open, you know, um, high, low, and close. So the low here at 2145 was the level we were watching. The very next week, we had a close at 2067, and that was a, a bearish or a weekly doji sell signal. Um, the next week, you know, we did overlap. Um, one of the things we'll talk about today is is how to determine your entry points. So oftentimes, I, you know, this is a weekly bar. So, you know, this week's bar was a low of 2046. And as I said, a close of 2067 and a high of 2154. So I look for an, a level the, the next week to overlap this bar. So the following week, the high was 2097. So it overlaps some of this price action, allows you to re reduce the risk. And it was a that was a good entry because the next week we gapped lower. It opened at 2004 and you can see we declined very sharply for a number of weeks trading below the weekly stark band and you know, we got a couple of week rebound but that's quite typical you know you get pullbacks in uptrends and you get rallies in downtrends you can see that market just hit this red 20 week ema before it continued lower so this signal and of course by that time the obv had dropped below its moving average you know, that was a negative sign and this decline lasted you know into you know early 2013 before Apple bottomed out uh, eventually got a low as twelve dollars and twenty six from twenty dollars so that was a big move and something well worth capitalizing on so now let's look at uh, a doji buy signal so this is NOAA NOH and -O -N -A -O rather excuse me we had a high here of 1770 and a low of four of uh, 12 so uh, that's a four dollar move so that was about a tw more tw more than a 20 percent decline we formed a doji here opened at 1386 high of 1424 low of 1338 and a close of 1388 so we look at the high here 1424 so that's the level we're watching for the next week next week we closed at 1495 so that triggered a doji buy signal a weekly buy signal um you, know, we, you had another strong move up the next week there was some overlap we closed at 1495 the the low was 1460 the following week but closed it at uh very you know at 1495 and uh, then, of course, prices accelerated the upside. You can see once the doji buy signal was triggered, the OBV was positive. It was back above its moving average. So that supported the view that you should be a buyer. Uh, when doji signals are confirmed by the technical studies, either positively or negatively, they're more important. One question I frequently get is, well, why do I concentrate on weekly charts as opposed to daily or sh shorter time frame? The more, the longer the time frame data you look at, the more valuable the, the signal because in a very short time frame, you have more noise. So when you're looking at a weekly price range, there's a lot of give and take in that and that the numbers, the ranges are generally more reliable, if you will. And also the signals are more important. So if you, if you get an hourly doji signal, you may just be looking for it to last four or five hours. So it may be over before the end of the day if it's generated in the morning so with a daily one you know it can last a week or more and uh, weekly they can last even longer um, I'm often asked how how often are these signals correct you know I track them weekly for the Viper hot stocks uh, traders yeah, I would say 60 to 70 percent of them turn out pretty well um, you know and I look at uh, whether you know the market moves you know in this case for for Noah, i'd be looking okay at the close of 1495 i would want to see it close back below that level or certainly back below the low of that week which was 1391 that would suggest to me the signal had failed the traditional method of looking the doji low here you know which was 1338 would have been your initial stop that's why it's important to look for some overlap because you don't want to have too large a risk. This was pretty rewarding. We had 
sharp weeks to the upside, got as high as uh, 2560 uh, and then closed uh, down at 1967, so a reversal bar there, and uh, but she had some good profit potential. Let's look at another weekly buy. This is uh, IDEX Laboratories. Had a very nice, well-established decline. Was trading around 256. Got down to um, a low here of uh, 176. $80 decline in a $200 stock. So it was about a 30% move. Formed a doji. Closed on the high. So you know, uh, that high was 188.99. So that's the level we're looking to generate, you know, a doji buy. You had a pronounced decline, so you really wouldn't be, you know, looking for a doji sell since you'd already had that sort of decline. So a doji buy was what you're looking for. The next week, we opened at 91.82, hit a high of 298, low of 189.69, closed at 287. So generating that was above the 188.99 level generating a weekly buy signal the following week we had a low of 184.52 so you know, you got uh, you know you had a pretty nice pullback you know relative to the the prior week and a, and a pretty good entry point um, if you wanted to get along this market um, and this signal lasted you know as you can see up until uh, July of 2019 when we finally generated a a uh, weekly doji sell signal and another weekly doji sell signal of course once you're taking either a long or a short position it's important to have a price objective that allows you to determine the risk reward and whether you want to take a position this is aflac early in this year very flat price activity um, we formed a doji um, towards the end of February of 2020 um, the prior week you can see the OBV rallied back to its moving average and then that's a bearish setup next week we formed a doji here and then the following week we closed at uh, closed at 5040 which was below the doji low of 5071 so then you want to look at take a little more look at where you thought the market might find fall to if you're going to take a short position what was your target so we're trading around 50 40 you look back towards you know a, the, a low there 39.91 okay or down here 31.18 okay so that was uh you know a, a range of uh you know about 11 points 20 percent drop basically um of course you probably wouldn't have anticipated that it was going to go down to uh, a low of uh, 22.57 because I think you have to look at a, low, oh, a monthly chart to see if it ever got that low you can see that low corresponded to a low we got in 2015 August of 2015 so it was a pretty severe decline I look for these signals in ETFs commodities any type of market this is a pretty interesting one. Once again, you know, if your monthly signals are even more important than the weekly, and, and weekly, of course, are stronger than the daily. So in September of 2018, the SPDR Gold Trust, leading ETF Gold, had formed a doji. It opened at 12.75, closed at 12.76, with a high of 14.78 and a low of 11.85. So we were looking for a close above that high. Of 1478 the very next month October of 2018 we got a close of 1515 so a weekly or a monthly doji buy signal was generated OBV was still below its moving average but was rising at that point and that started off what was a pretty amazing run to the upside um, we didn't have any real doji signals until we, we got into uh, August of 2020 and you know, we formed a doji above the stark band so once prices are above a monthly stark band it tells you the market's ready for a, re uh, a rest and we got it um, we had a low here of uh, 
we closed here at uh, 177.12, so it triggered a monthly doji sell signal, and we got two more months on the downside before the market turned around. You often see some good doji sell signals and buy signals in crude oil. This was in uh, the summer of uh, 2015, formed a number of dojis. So, you know, you don't see this too often in individual stocks, but usually it is a, a, a sign of indecision. Lots of dojis, and so we got these two real clear-cut dojis. Um, this one had a low of 58.73, and this had a low of 58.76. So you can see we'd had a, pri a rally from 42 up to you know, six above 60. So that was about a 50% rally in crude oil. It doesn't look too dramatic on the chart, but that was certainly big enough. The, finally, you got a weekly doji sell signal. We closed here at 55.52 below both of these doji lows. And that started, uh, you know, the OBV, you know, turned negative um, the next week and stayed negative. You know, we had, had a pretty good decline into 2016. So if you look at, you know, uh, XLE, you know, energy ETF, you can see that it formed a doji or even earlier in April of 2015. You know, one, two, usually the best signals occur within three bars of when the doji is formed. So this low here was for this is XLE, remember, was 66.50. So we closed here at 67.11. This low was 66.22, which was below 66.50, generating a doji sell signal. OBV turned negative the next week, and we declined from, you know, that closing level at uh, 66 down to the uh, low 40s, 42 right here. So if you were in oil stocks, you know, that could have told you that, well, okay, Exxon, Chevron, those are not the guys to be in. And, uh, you know, uh, that was a good place to get out of those energy stocks and get into something else or go short. The Let's look back at this crude chart. You also get monthly signals. So this was in 2016. We were, you can see we had a couple of monthly doji sell signal too. That was the same month we got the weekly. And we formed a nice doji down here. Um, crude had made a low of $26. It fallen from sixty dollars to twenty six, so that was a significant decline. And then in in March of twenty sixteen, we got a close here of uh, thirty eight thirty four, which was above this Doji high of thirty four thirty sixty nine. Clearly a Doji buy signal, yeah, well above it, four dollars above it crude oil, and um, the OBV was rising, turned positive the very next month, and uh, we had a pretty good move to the upside, you know, up until uh, the middle of 2018. So we went from that closing level here of 38.34 up to a high here of uh, $75, almost doubled crude oil during that period. Another question I get frequently is, well, how long do these signals last? And, uh, you know, there's no set rule. Uh, I would say on average, they probably add uh, last between five and seven weeks. <clears throat> Sometimes they last a lot longer. This is one that occurred in early 2020. SWKS, a, a chip stock, Skyworks Solutions, formed a doji here with a high of uh, 8060. It had been as high as 126, so it dropped forty dollars or thirty percent. Strong close the next week at uh, 86.14, and uh, you know the OBV was still negative, was rising at that point, trying to bottom out. Didn't turn positive till several weeks later, but then this stock kept moving higher and higher um, into early December of this year. It's still making a new high. No new doji sell signals. And typically what I do is I look for um, after four to six weeks, I see, watch the low for this doji buy signal. I look at the lows, weekly lows, to see if we violate any of those to suggest the trend is weakening. 
this was a good example you already had no you know you know came back in here held the lows held the lows higher lows higher lows um you know until we got into here was there some signs of loss of of upside momentum oftentimes you see signals in a stock or an etf and then you'll get new signals so it's good to keep memory this is uh hdfc bank limited had a high here of 36 dollars decline to a low at uh 29 dollars so you know six dollar move just about 20 percent formed a clear-cut doji here really tight range next week we closed well above that doji high and uh the obv was rising it closed turned positive the next week so you may ask well okay we had a strong close and then a doji is that something to be worried about and i would tell you no you know yeah this is a dominant bar in the past month this is just a little it was up uh, if you look at in terms of closed uh, 2984 and then we closed here at uh, about uh, 10 percent higher for the week so you know it took some time to digest that buying we formed a doji so nothing wrong with that next week we accelerated back to the upside and you can see this stock kept moving higher and higher and higher you know up into september of 2017 and we got up to you know 50 dollars a share so from this close that was a pretty nice move particularly for a financial stock when we finally started to top out the obv started erosing and we got a, a heavy bar of selling so when i look to make a recommendation i often do look at the target so this is uh, cybr cyberarc software it came up close to its weekly stark bands so that's i'm looking for a sell signal this was in early 2020 and we formed a doji here it had a low of 136.64 got really hit hard the next week closing at uh, 118.94 so you really didn't have a great entry you can see the next week we came had a high of 24.42 which just touched the 20 week moving average which was at 2406 before it really took off to the downside some heavy selling there that was before the overall market crack so in terms of a target you look at this low and say okay well that's 90 30 so that's the first reasonable target is, is just to move back to that low so if you get we're lucky to get at 124 down to 94 so that's you know that's a pretty uh you know it's a 30 dollar move um so that's a good uh 15 percent move at least the next level you might want to look at in terms of a further downside target would have been you know this high remember it's important in technical analysis when you overcome a high this that this is this high as resistance once you break above it it becomes support and so you dropped back you know you got even lower than that that was 84 21 before the bottom was in place it got as low as 69.50. When you're just working with dojis, you know this is sort of a situation where you like you see a doji here and and you're going like you know I'll get the question, oh is this um, should I be looking for a doji sell signal? Well, I mean you hadn't been going up for too much. Let's see, we had a low of 64.66, a high of 88. So that was a 20% move, but you know time is also important. So didn't matter because the low here was 8301 and you never got a doji sell signal you know you can see the market moved much higher you know before it even had a decent pullback this is another weekly sell from earlier in the year clear doji here that formed at the end of january of 2014 had a high of 1398 and a low of 1148 closing at 1218 so we were looking for a close below 1148 we got it the next week we closed at 107.78 um, the following week you know we can see this overlap of that prior bar so you look at this price range you know the high was 112.881 the low was 105.36 so you know roughly that was uh you know a six uh seven dollar move say so 350 uh, you know an overlap of 350 from the high or the low 
uh, you know, let's take it from the low uh, at uh, 105, 350 added on to that. It gives you 108.50, and the high here was 110.81. So you got a pretty good selling opportunity here. Where was your target? 86, you know, 13, that low we had from August of 2019. We held that low. We got a little bit lower at uh, 85.58 before it bottomed out in March. So early November, we had a number of weekly buy signals. This was one in AWI, that's Armstrong World Industries. You can see we had a nice little doji here. Um, the next week, we gapped higher, closing strong. So the doji high was uh, 63.15. We closed here at 73.21. So when you get that big a move, you know, it's really hard to take a position. So generally what I suggest you do and what I do is I put that on my watch list. Yeah. And, uh, you know, looking for an entry point down the road. So you can look forward. It had a pretty nice was up for a month afterwards. And it's still higher. Of course, you all need to look at once I get a, a doji signal. You want to look at the, you know, you could have maybe bought it the next week with a stop here at 70, but it, it opened the following at 75. So that's still, that's more than a 5% stop. Um, turned out we got up here and it looked like we were going to see a pullback. So I was trying to look for a pullback into the 72 where the, the monthly pivot was and the 20 day EMA never got it. And we just started moving higher. So I canceled that buy order. So there are a number of ways you can look and find dojis and find doji signals, um, stock charts. You know, this is just a real simple little uh, scan for weekly gravestones. And uh, you can, you know, see that it has a category. So then if you, you know, last market close, you know, was December 7th, you really want to have, uh, you know, um, a weekly one preferably. So. So this simple scan, you know, I run on Fridays and, and look at dojis that way. Also, if you look at uh, their their technical scans or what they call them, is that uh, they have this uh, symbol market summary. Um, and then they have predefined scans. So if you go predefined scans, um, I find one of my favorite things has always been the bullish gainers. But for dojis, you can have, you know, you know, they have a whole section down here on candlestick patterns. So morning star, you know, uh, evening star, gravestone doji, and dragonfly doji. So, um, you know, you can see what, uh, you know, what they have in any of those categories. One thing I tell traders as well as investors, you know, to look for formations, you know, if they have a position, one of the hardest things, if you have a nice move and you, you say like, okay, well, you know, is it time to take my profits or not? I have, I suggest people look to see if a doji is forming the last hour of trading. Oftentimes you'll see a dramatic move and then you'll see a doji forming maybe at the upper, you know, Keltner channels or Stark bands at, or at monthly resistance, pivot resistance. And you'll see a doji's forming and uh, the market will set back from there. So it usually gives you an opportunity to take some of your profits and avoid a pullback. Well, I hope I answered most of your questions on weekly doji formations, both buy and sell signals. But as always, you can email me at tom at Viper Report if you have some other additional follow-up questions. And if you get a survey asking you how you like this video, please be honest and tell me what you liked and didn't like and what other topics you might like to have discussed. If you'd like to read more about candle buy signals and sell signals, you can go to the viperreport.com. There's a, an older article from Forbes posted on the main page, one chart formation you shouldn't ignore. And it'll give you some more examples um, of weekly doji signals. Um, if you uh, are interested in either of my publications, the Viper ETF or the Viper Hot Stocks Report, you can find links on the viperreport.com homepage. We'll take you there. Each service provides two reports a week plus six trading lessons, which includes a detailed report on weekly stock doji buy signals and sell signals. And the Viper Hot Stocks report is also $34.95 per month. 
and two reports a week and plus interim updates when the markets get crazy. If you're interested in learning more about technical analysis, you might consider the one-on-one uh, -on -one training with me. It's an introductory price um, for $199. We spend at least 90 minutes, uh, just you and me in a Zoom session, looking at real charts and discussing topics that can either improve your investing or trading or get you started to, to learn more about technical analysis. So great, thank you for tuning in and uh, I will be doing another lesson probably before the end of the year. Thank you.